Obviously, had some up and down luck with the injuries, but man, you finished your senior year really, really strong with some career highs. Do you feel like you're playing your best football in your career right now? One hundred percent. I feel like right now I'm just kind of having fun with it, like just being able to just be a kid again and play. You know, one thing earlier this season that I was kind of dealing with was just kind of the whole injury aspect. You know, and it, it's really hard to play a, to play your game when you have like a whole lot of thoughts in the back of your mind, like, oh, if I make this cut, like, is this going? You know, it's just a whole lot of second guessing going on, but. Once you kind of eliminate those doubts and everything and you kind of get to just play your game, just be a kid like you were in high school, just playing football, you know, it just makes everything fun. It makes everything easier. So I feel like at this point, I'm just having fun with the guys. Florida State's defense, the one you're going to see is different than the one you've seen on film because they've had so much change with personnel. How does that affect your preparation? To be honest, it doesn't affect it at all because how I look at it, you know, because I, I know a lot of players on the defense, and to be honest, a lot of the players on the defense were the four and five stars coming out of high school. Like, that's just what it is. When you get to teams like this, top to bottom in the roster, it's all super talented players. You know, you can look throughout the season, even out on uh, our team, like, if we had a player out, we had a, a very talented player filling in. So I feel like, you know, you have to prepare the same way because if you don't, it'll come back to bite you in the end. What has it been like being a running back at Georgia at school, known for running yeah. back? It's been amazing just being able to embrace the culture, embrace the legacy that, you know, players have already left behind. And, you know, being able to still, I still talk to James Cook, uh, Kenny McIntosh, Sonny will come back, Nick Chubb will come back, still talk to Todd. And being able to follow behind a legacy like that is a blessing because at the end of the day, those are the players that I grew up watching, you know. I can remember, you know, watching Todd Gurley, watching Nick Chubb, Sonny Michelle. Like, I remember watching all those guys and to be able to be a part of that legacy and build those connections with those guys, it means a real time. What, what's what's the Trevor Etienne yet? Uh, not yet, to be honest, just because, you know, you know, he's coming in, he's probably, you know, still handling things over there. Everybody's still in their own lane. I'm preparing for this bowl game. So, you know, everybody's still kind of handling business right now. So. What, what's it been like seeing James and Zamir, you know, having their success in the NFL recently? Have you reached mm -hmm. out to them? Oh, yeah, it's amazing just seeing, first off, I remember just watching James and it just, it just makes me just jump up seeing the, seeing those boys the next level because at the end of the day, that's where everybody wants to get to. That's really the goal. And, you know, Zamir's last game, Zamir went crazy, you know. And just to see those guys, because I know how hard they work and, you know, they talk to me about it all the time. You know, the league is a is a cutthroat type of place. You, you know, you got to take advantage of your opportunities. And to be able to see Zamir and Cook, like, really just – put on a show and just show their talents. Like, it just makes me happy. I'm in the living room, jumping up and down, you know, right after the game, FaceTiming them, like, you went crazy, you know? <laughs> those, those are the guys at the end of the day. And to be honest, those guys, like, they still, like, it's a family aspect. They still check on me. You know, my family went out to Vegas to, uh, and Zamir got them tickets to the game. They hung out and stuff, you know. Uh, a couple weeks ago, me and Cook were on the phone for about 30 minutes just having a conversation this is just about, you know, how we're feeling, you know, everything like that. So it's a family aspect, and I'm super blessed I got to get in the room with those guys and build a connection with those guys. You've obviously got an opportunity to go to that next level after this year. Why was it so important to you? And, and I know you were adamant after the SEC championship that you were going to play. Why was it so important to you that you played in this game? To be honest, just because I never really looked at a reason not to play in the game just because – you know, this is, especially in football, you work all year and you only have so many opportunities to play. You know, you probably get 15, you know, solid opportunities to, you know, go out there and play with your guys. So I feel like there really would be no point because, you know, at the end of this season, you don't know some players going to the league, some players coming back, some players hitting the portal, some players not playing football anymore. You know, you never know this is the last time that a lot of uh, the team is going to be playing together. So I feel like it's important to really emphasize and embrace the moment and the opportunities that we have. Kendall, what's it been like playing with Lad McCombs? Oh, playing with Lad is it's crazy because I remember I was a freshman and I was early enrolled. He came in early and Lad was on a visit. And, you know, I, I never heard of Lad. I didn't know Lad. You know, he was just a, a, a little kid, a little scrawny, skinny kid. And, you know, he came in and he really just stayed focused. He got to work. He took advantage, I think he did a year or two on scout team. And, you know, every day we would come in the locker room and the DBs like Eric Stokes and Tyson Campbell, they would come in talking about, man, Lad going crazy out there. Like, <laughs> like you know, Lad, Lad tearing us up. So, you know, I always knew how talented Lad was and to be able to see him really take advantage of his opportunities and, you know, just become the player he is today, you know. He has all the success, he has everything in the world, but he's the most humble person on you know on earth. So to be able to play with a player like that is definitely a blessing.
he's got a big decision to make. Do you mm-hmm. feel like he's ready if he decides to? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I feel like Lad. I feel like it just shows on film, you know, like he's a technician when it comes to his craft, you know, his routes, his when he breaks. Like I see Lad all the time. He's constantly in the film room, constantly working. Like I see how dedicated he is to the game. So I have no doubt that he won't tear it up at the next level if he chooses to do so. Carson obviously announces his decision to come back. You know, how big of a boost in energy do you feel like that's been for y'all in this bowl prep? And you know, how big of a boost can that be for this team next year, having a you know mm-hmm. second year starting quarterback? It was definitely great, especially having a quarterback that has the experience. And Carson's played against really uh, competitive teams with great rosters, and you know. To be able to have a quarterback that can kind of dissect the, the defense and make my job easier, really, and just simpl- simplify everything out on the field, it definitely, you know, puts a little advantage to the side because it allows everybody to play calm, you know. If he doesn't like what he sees, he's going to put us in the right position to be successful. So to be with somebody like that, you know, it just, it's a blessing, really, on the team. And I, I feel really confident that, you know, next year when he returns, he's going to shatter the numbers he had this year and put on some crazy video game numbers. So I'm excited for him and his future. You've obviously been a part of an offense that had a second year starter last year with Stetson. What was the biggest difference you felt between year one and year two, not specifically with Stetson, but you know, just in general with a quarterback that was, you know, had that experience under his belt? What was the biggest difference in an offense you felt? To be honest, it just felt like year one and year two specifically, just speaking with Stetson in my experience, it just felt like, you know, Year one, that was his first year, I believe, starting. So he was still like a little antsy, you know, things like that. But year two, it just felt like he was super calm. Like he was super, not not nonchalant or anything, but he was just super calm in the fact that he was so confident in his job that he had, you know, no worries. He didn't have, you know, any doubts or anything like that. Like he really just made it easier, just like Carson's doing. And I feel like at the end of the day, to be a quarterback at Georgia, like, our playbook is super, super wide and so many checks, so many different, you know, calls. And you have to be able to know the game of football to a deeper level. And just besides the plays and, you know, what routes people have, you have to know kind of the technician type of aspect. And, you know, I feel like that was kind of the shift that Stetson made. And, you know, I feel like, to be honest, Carson took these four years and he already made those changes. He already was a sponge and was just absorbing information, absorbing tools from, you know, Stetson and just learning new things. So I feel like Carson's already ahead of the game in his position.